Bonnie's Bakery is a charming little game where you play as a cute baker named Bonnie, happily serving delicious pastries to your adorable animal friends. But behind the sweet facade lies a twisted tale of kidnapping and murder. Whoa there, let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. In this cute game, you'll help Bonnie run her cozy bakery, whipping up tasty treats for a colorful cast of characters. But as we'll soon uncover, there's a sinister secret lurking beneath the surface. If you're new to Bonnie's Bakery, prepare yourself for a game that will have you questioning your own morality. Shout out to Donani Lau, 7724, for suggesting this game. So, are you ready to dive into this adventure? Let's get baking! In this game, you play as this cute little character named Bonnie who's running her very own bakery. And this one's got a whole bunch of talking animal customers lining up to get their paws on some delicious baked goodies. You've got to follow these recipes to whip up the perfect pastries and cakes for your furry friends. But it's not as easy as it sounds. You've got to click on a prep station to get to the recipes, and then you've got to drag all the right ingredients you know, like flour, sugar, milk, eggs, and a whole lot of fat, into this big ol' stand mixer. And you've gotta make sure you're putting them in the right order too, or else you'll end up with a big mess. Once you've got your batter all mixed up, you've gotta pour it into a cake tin and pop it in the oven. But then, you've got all these customers flooding in, placing orders left and right, and you've gotta keep up with the demand. It's like one of those crazy time management games, except with more animals and fat. So far, it's just a cute baking game, right? But then, our friend the bear hints at something dark happening in the background. Apparently, there's some shady stuff happening in the neighborhood, with animals just up and disappearing without a trace. Then suddenly, BAM! We're a purple man and we're inside a dark cell. And there are animals with missing limbs and a scary bonnie patrolling the area. But, let's rewind. To understand what's happening here, let's first take a look at the DLC, where we go back in time and get a better understanding as to what the heck is happening. In the DLC, called Bonnie's Bakery Fresh Ingredients, we're playing as Bonnie again. But this time, we're not just baking cute pastries. Oh no, we're on the hunt for some fresh ingredients. And by fresh ingredients, I mean the cute animal customers that were lining up outside the bakery earlier. That's right. Bonnie's got this whole serial killer vibe going on now. She's got a list of potential victims, or ingredients as she calls them, and she's stalking them around town to learn their routines. And this town is full of shady characters. We've got missing children, a shady figure lurking in the background, and even a moose that tells a whole lot of punny jokes. It's wild. Anyways, Bonnie's not messing around. She's got a huge hammer that she's not afraid to use. But here's the thing. Bonnie's not exactly subtle. She's running around town with a giant hammer and a creepy mask, and people are starting to notice. It's a whole thing. That's her alter ego, Bunny. But back to the story. There is a stealth element to the game now, where you've got to avoid getting caught by the cops or the townspeople. And if you do get spotted, you better hope you can outrun them, because getting arrested is definitely going to put a damper on your little murder spree. But that's not all. It turns out that Bonnie's not the only one with a taste for blood. There's a shady character who's apparently been kidnapping children. Our Bonnie's got a moral compass, though, and she says she would never do anything to children. You know, because she's not a monster. So yeah, this DLC takes the cute, wholesome world of Bonnie's Bakery and turns it on its head. And here's where things get really messed up. It turns out that Bonnie's not just killing for the fun of it. She's actually been kidnapping her victims and keeping them locked up in the basement of her bakery. See, after you've stalked and kidnapped all your targets, you head back to the bakery to start baking. But instead of whipping up some cute little cupcakes, you're dragging the bodies of your victims down to the basement and throwing them into big metal cages. And that's when it hits you. Those aren't just random animals you've been killing. They're the missing townspeople that everyone's been looking for. And Bonnie's been using them as ingredients in her pastries. That's right, those delicious little meat pies and savory baked goods everyone's been raving about, they're made with real live animals. And if that wasn't enough, Bonnie's been feeding those pastries to the unsuspecting townspeople. 
they've been chowing down on their own friends and neighbors without even realizing it. And all those cute little animals we kidnapped earlier, they're down there with us, locked up and waiting to be turned into fresh ingredients. So let's go back to the original game. Bonnie's not just a cute little baker anymore. She's got this whole place on lockdown and she's not afraid to use that hammer of hers to keep her victims in line. And we're stuck down there in the dark, trying to figure out how to escape before Bonnie decides to make us her next special of the day. But we're not down there alone. A panda with missing limbs is in the basement with us and they are trying to help us escape. Panda is the one who tells us to look for Bonnie's notes hidden around the room, which apparently hold the key to getting out of this prison. So now we're crawling around in the dark, trying not to make a sound as we search for these notes, all while Bonnie's upstairs humming to herself as she bakes her next batch of treats. And the tension is real. But somehow we manage to find all the notes and decipher the code to unlock the door. Now there are a few possible endings depending on your actions in the game. First up, we have the fresh ingredients ending. If you're unlucky enough to get caught by Bonnie during night mode, you'll be treated to a lovely scene of Bear ordering a red velvet cake the next day. And you're the secret ingredient. Second, we've got the escape ending. If you manage to score two heads in the baking mini game and make it through night mode, you'll get to witness the purple man, that's us, trying to expose Bonnie's crimes to the townsfolk. It takes some convincing, but once they see the evidence, they're all like, oh snap, we've been eating our friends. They storm the bakery, but Bonnie's nowhere to be found. Sneaky little bunny. Third, if you're an overachiever and score three heads in the baking mini game, you'll unlock the waiting ending. The purple man is hiding out, waiting for Bonnie to slip up so they can catch her in the act and expose her to the world. Now, the fourth ending. If you're a bit of a slacker and only manage to get one head in the baking minigame, you'll be treated to the fear ending. Our poor protagonist tries to tell everyone about Bonnie's evil deeds. But without any evidence, the townsfolk are like, yeah, right. So our hero has to live in fear far, far away from the town and Bonnie's murder bakery. Fifth is the meme ending. If you really want to see something special, try getting a perfect score of zero in the baking mini game. You'll be rewarded with the Bingus ending, where everyone gets food poisoning and Bonnie gets sued into oblivion. Serves her right for using expired ingredients. Now, the sixth and final ending is the secret free ending. If you piece together the numbers hidden in the other endings, you'll get a special code to use in night mode. And not gonna lie, it's pretty satisfying. Rules of nature. The purple man finds a hidden knife and goes all John Wick on Bonnie. Then they grab the limbless panda and make a break for it. The townsfolk are shocked, but they're also like, Dang, that bunny was messed up. So they take our hero and the panda to the hospital for some well-deserved rest. Let's now talk about the latest and final update for Bonnie's Bakery. Here, players can access a new book series that provides more backstory to Bonnie and the lore of the game. The book is divided into three chapters and players can read one chapter each night as they progress through the game's hunt mode. Chapter one, titled A Peaceful Town, introduces the ethereal lady, a godlike figure who watches over a town of children. The children are happy and peaceful under her care, but there is one devious child who causes trouble and doesn't get along with the others. Chapter two is called The Seeds of Doubt. Here we see some of the children transforming into beast-like creatures as they reject the ethereal lady's teachings. The player, as the ethereal lady, must fight these corrupted children. Using abilities like defend, heal, and forgive, we turn them back into their human form. Last is chapter three, named Unforgiven. It reveals that the ethereal lady banished the children who couldn't be saved, and they became beast-like creatures. One of these beasts returns and tries to tempt the remaining children, forcing the ethereal lady to battle it. 
This time she uses a new purify ability to defeat it once and for all. So that's the whole story. Makes perfect sense, right? Nope, doesn't make sense at all. So let's put all the pieces together and explain the dark story behind Bonnie's bakery. Let's start with Bonnie's beginnings. Bonnie had a normal human family. She would cook for them and others, which is something she would enjoy. However, Bonnie did not have much social interaction and apparently her family was not very well off. But one day, suddenly her family disappeared along with every other human. She does not know what happened to them, but still, she had to move on on her own. Once alone, Bonnie arrived in this town full of animals. The first thing she did was to buy an establishment that was in terrible shape. At first, it did not look like a bakery, but after lots of remodeling, she managed to make it just the way she wanted, and she had even made a basement to store supplies. Days passed until the opening day arrived. Bonnie was initially nervous that no one would come, but her first client was a little bear, the same one who asked for her red velvet recipe in the first game. Later, this bear would visit her often, and Bonnie would end up considering him as the closest thing to family. After him, more clients started to arrive. This was good, but Bonnie felt that they were not enjoying her baked goods. The clients kept coming the first days, but the further the week went on, it seemed that Bonnie's popularity was waning down. She thought that if the clients were human, she would possibly do well. But she knew she was the only human, so she tried to stay motivated. The second week came and no one arrived. The only thing Bonnie could do was restock the supplies, which were spoiling due to the lack of customers. In the third week, Bonnie became depressed as no customers had arrived. If this continued, she would have to close her bakery forever. What she did not expect was that the solution to her problems would arrive the night before she closed the bakery for good. That night, a small rabbit was knocking on the door to be let in. Bonnie opened the door for her, but in doing so, she noticed that the rabbit was badly injured. It was as if someone had attacked her. Bonnie took pity on her and let her stay in her bakery while she recovered. Another week passed and no customers arrived, and the poor rabbit was getting worse. Bonnie tried to cure her, but nothing was working. Unfortunately, the poor thing did not last another day. Bonnie did not know what to do. She had a body in her business and had to get rid of it. The only thing that occurred to her was to use it as an ingredient for her meat pie. After all, no one had asked about the rabbit in all those days. The smell of freshly baked buns caught the attention of some animals that were passing by. They asked about them and Bonnie had the idea to sell them some. They were so good that they started to recommend her bakery. Days passed and everything was improving for Bonnie, but now she had another problem. Customers wanted more of those buns and she was running out of the special ingredient. She would not let everything be ruined. Therefore, she designed a plan to get more ingredients. First, she got a disguise to avoid being recognized. With this disguise, she would go out at night to whack an animal with her hammer. After this, she would put the animal in a sack, and finally, she would take it to her basement. There, she would leave it alive so it would not spoil. This takes us to the DLC, where we have four targets. So let's talk a little about each animal on the list. First, we have the cat. From what we can see, he is pretty loaded, he does not mind spending money, and we could say that he likes to be the center of attention. Then we have the dog. The only interesting thing about him is his friend, the mouse. Apparently, she is the owner of a new bakery, which wants to compete with Bonnie. She was the reason that Bonnie's ads were removed, and it's possible that she also spoke ill of Bonnie, further damaging her reputation. This would explain why some animals began to dislike Bonnie's bakery. But Bonnie knew that she would be suspect number one if her main competitor disappeared, and that's why Bonnie did not target her. Then we have the rabbit. He is young and loves video games. The interesting thing about him happens at the town hall. Here we see him ask about the ongoing search for his younger sister, who has been missing for a long time. Unfortunately, he will never be able to find her. As you have likely guessed, she was the little rabbit that arrived injured at Bonnie's doorstep. And finally, we have Panda. Apparently, he is a detective who came to town to investigate all the disappearances. 
and he spent a week gathering information while consuming only coffee and burritos. He knows that this town is dangerous at night, so he always carries a weapon that he will use if necessary. One would think that his investigation is based on the disappearances caused by Bonnie. This is partly true, but his main mission was to find out why children were going missing. But as we know, Bonnie had nothing to do with it. Now, as we can see, these animals have very little in common. So how was Bonnie picking her targets? Well, it was based on where they lived. And by that, I mean that they all lived far from town. Bonnie knew that she could not kidnap animals that lived just a few doors down. This would attract way too much attention. So she targeted only those who lived far away. And as we know, each one of the targets ended up in Bonnie's basement with missing limbs. Panda ended up in the worst state as Bonnie would not risk him escaping and getting revenge on her. But let's now go back to the missing children. Throughout the game, we see that the townspeople know that something dark is afoot. Apparently, someone had taken them away. Bonnie may be crazy, but she would never harm a child. And we know that because she says it herself. So it would seem there are two psychopaths in this town. Bonnie kidnaps and cooks adults, and a mysterious guy kidnaps children, like the little mouse that went to play video games. Except that this guy, unlike Bonnie, does not look for certain characteristics in his victims. If he had the opportunity, he would simply take them, but in a sadistic way. Bonnie would hit them and put them in a sack, but this guy would stab them and chase them. This would explain why the rabbit's sister arrived wounded at Bonnie's bakery. She had been able to escape from him, but had been mortally wounded. So we could say that he was the cause of Bonnie starting the kidnappings. Without realizing it, one monster had created another monster. So who is this mysterious second person? Unfortunately, we don't know for sure, but a popular theory is that it's Bonnie's rival. That would mean that they kidnap children to cook them in the same way that Bonnie does, or they simply leave them in their basement. And because the townspeople think Bonnie was behind all the disappearances, they are unlikely to be caught. Now let's talk about the purple man, who we play as while we're in Bonnie's basement. You might think that this guy is a detective like Panda, since his objective is to discover who is responsible for the kidnappings. But no, in reality, he is a normal citizen who witnessed one of Bonnie's kidnappings. As we know, she only uses a mask when she goes out hunting. This is obviously far from the best disguise, and the purple man recognized her during one of her hunts. He tried to tell the others that the kidnapper looked like Bonnie, but no one listened to him. They did not believe that a sweet and cute girl like Bonnie could do something like that. This was the reason why he started to investigate Bonnie. We can even see the investigation he conducts after Panda's kidnapping. Here, we see that at the beginning, Bonnie did not suspect the purple man, but then she noticed that he spent several days looking at her business. Therefore, one day she invited him in. When he entered, he had to wait a bit because Bonnie was busy. But while he was doing so, he noticed something strange. There was a back door with a password. He felt that what he was looking for was there, but so that she would not suspect him, he asked for a special cake and started talking to her. After this, she left to attend to the other customers. It is here where we can do several things. The first is to leave the bakery and accept that our suspicions were wrong. But if we decide to stay, we can try to enter through that door while she is distracted. But we do not succeed, as we do not know the password. Another option is to hide somewhere and wait until night to be able to enter through that door. This seemed to be a perfect plan, as no one would be around. Or so we thought. Out of nowhere, Bonnie appears and whacks us with her hammer, then locks us up in her basement. Apparently, she had grown suspicious of us when we disappeared at the beginning. You could say this is the correct option, as it explains how we got to Bonnie's basement in the first game. And, well, we already know how this ends. This brings us to another puzzling question of this game. What the heck is Bingus? At first, it was just a meme that the developers created, which appeared when you failed to get points. One would think that in the DLC, it would continue to be a joke. That seemed to be the case until we see the ending called You Can't Escape from Bingus. Here, everything seemed normal until out of nowhere, a scene with the corpse of a young woman is shown. 
But why did this appear in the Bingus ending? It was to show us that something is wrong with Bonnie. From the beginning, it is clear that Bonnie suffers from some type of mental disorder. Even more so, we could say that her perception of reality was altered. But what could this mental disorder be? To answer this, I am going to borrow from a theory I saw on Reddit by user Robinson Austin. According to this user, Bonnie suffers from lycanthropic intermetamorphosis. That's a big term. But in simple terms, people who suffer from this disease believe that others have transformed into animals. In other words, from Bonnie's point of view, the town looks like a cheerful and colorful place full of animals. But in reality, it's a regular town full of regular people. This means that everything we see in the game is not what it seems. So when Bonnie says that she is the only human in the place, this is not true. All the animals we saw throughout the game are actually humans. We know this thanks to the secret files in which we can see some missing people posters. Here we can see the four animals that we hunted and the poor rabbit that arrived with injuries. This is the same rabbit that we saw in the Bingus ending. Maybe Bonnie is a prisoner of her own mind. The sinister thing behind this theory is that it would mean that Bonnie has been feeding human flesh to humans. Now, I know what you're thinking. What about that book stuff from the latest update with the ethereal lady? What's up with that? Well, as far as I have seen, there isn't much information as to what it means. But here is my theory. The ethereal lady is a representation of Bonnie's mother or a maternal figure in her life who tried to raise her with strict moral guidelines. The peaceful town and the obedient children mirror Bonnie's idealized view of how society should function. However, as some children start to rebel and turn into beasts, it reflects Bonnie's perspective on how people who don't conform to her worldview are impure and need to be eliminated. This ties into the theory that the animal characters in the game are actually humans. The ethereal lady's banishment of the corrupted children and the creation of the beast-filled outside world could be a metaphor for Bonnie's mental state. The town represents her perfect world, while the outside represents the harsh reality she can't cope with. This supports the idea that Bonnie suffers from a mental illness that distorts her perception of reality. The ethereal lady's methods increase in level of violence, like using the purify ability to kill the returning beast. This mirror Bonnie's own descent into darkness and her justification that she's doing the right thing by eliminating the impure animals. The Bingus gameplay, with its mysterious symbols and ritualistic sounds could hint at a cult-like aspect to the ethereal lady's story. This might suggest that Bonnie's twisted worldview stems from a cult-like upbringing that indoctrinated her with extreme ideas of purity and punishment. This is supported by the fact that Bonnie seems to hint that she left her family perhaps because of her harsh upbringing, as she says that her family is dead to her. And that ends my theory. And there you have it, the twisted and disturbing truth behind Bonnie's Bakery. What seemed to be a cute and quirky game about a lovable girl baking treats for her animal friends turned out to be a dark and sinister tale of deception, kidnapping, and murder. The cheerful bakery is actually a front for Bonnie's gruesome crimes. She attacks and kidnaps unsuspecting animals to use as ingredients in her pastries. Who would have thought? If you enjoy this series, give the video a thumbs up to let me know you'd like to see more. Subscribe if you loved it. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. What other cute and innocent looking games do you know that hide a terrifying secret? Thank you for joining me on this chilling journey through Bonnie's Bakery. Bye for now.